Here's uh, Terry Bradshaw from yesterday. He, he he said several things, and I'm glad we've unspooled it into multiple clips. He was on with Colin Coward. Remember, he made the stir Monday on WFAM with Moose and Maggie. Right. And he went all in on Aaron Rodgers, and it just shows how weak he is, and they should call his bluff, et cetera. So when you do something like that, what happens? Other shows call you up, and they want they want in on it. They want to get some of this buzz. We want to get some of this some of this controversy stirred up with our show being the one whose name is on the graphic when shows like PFT Live talk about it the next day. So congratulations, Colin Coward. You booked your colleague, Terry Bradshaw. Here's the first clip where Terry has things to say about some of the mechanics of one of the greatest players in the history of the NFL. Roll the clip, please. While Aaron Rodgers is phenomenal, look, he's an incredible player. But I could sit here and tell you right now, he has probably uh, the worst footwork I've ever seen for a starting quarterback. I mean, he, but uh, I was talking to uh, uh, John Zarnecki this morning, and I said, he's an amazingly accurate. He protects the football. He puts up monster numbers. But his footwork is all over the place. And I don't know if that's because he got hit a lot and he's out of position and doesn't trust his lineman very seldom steps into a throw. Pretty impressive, actually. I think Terry, uh, what the hell is Terry doing? Has, what well, the hell is he well, doing? Just tell me. Well, what, what is he doing? His charm, his charm comes in large part from the fact that there's not necessarily a filter between the brain and the mouth. Yours kind of comes from that, too. But he's contradicting himself because he's thinking out loud. And yes, his footwork may be bad. It doesn't have to be. Lesser talent is, is, is Mahomes foot, proper mechanics. Footwork perfect. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It's a dumb. It doesn't matter. See now you if look. If you can flick yes. the wrist, right. if you can flick the wrist and deliver the ball accurately, the mechanics don't matter. The mechanics are the means to the end. If you can get to the end without the means. Knock yourself out. That's right. That's what it is. All the mechanics are so perfect that he can cheat on them to a degree and rely on the other nine mechanics that are perfect and maybe his feet aren't perfect to still get the perfect result. It's like Steph Curry. It's like Steph Curry. Yeah, he's a machine. But then he gets to the point where he can shoot it quick or fade away or not jump all the way or whatever. That's what happens. You know, like a good golfer. Okay, yeah, we all want to hit it down the middle. Then you become so good at hitting it down the middle, you start to go, well, wait, this hole kind of go bends this way. Let me hit a draw or a fade because I'm getting that damn good. I don't need to have it like hit it perfect like by the textbook, you know, uh, definition every time. See, to me, this is where like comments like that, now Terry loses like, uh, to me, any credibility, it all that, that that like went out to like that. Something's personal. There's something. Why? Why are you going there? Why are you talking Looking about for any reason he can? Any reason he can to criticize him? That's uh, that's what any, I mean. That's, that's what, what it looks doing. like. You're right. right. It that, undermines. That's him. where it undermines us. So and now you're wait wait. You're worried about his footwork, but yet he's the most accurate thrower in the history of football. So you're gonna get on that. And nobody's taking care of the football better and not even close in the history of the football. And really realistically, and I don't like like fighting back on Terry Bradshaw with this, but I'm I'm just keeping it real and listen, I'm one that Rodgers is wrong. It's it, this is all it's this is all an issue. I'm not sitting here trying to defend Rodgers, but when it comes to this, I mean anybody who would evaluate Aaron Rodgers would tell you his feet are like one of the most special things about his football game. I mean that's what makes him Aaron Rodgers. He can he can move and jump around in the pocket and make throws with the feet not in perfect position. But really, ultimately, like here, we've shown two plays and everything like that where he kind of moved around and hopped around. Like his feet are perfect. I don't know what. So that it's just that's a wrong assessment, and it does make it seem personal that way when he went down that that route there. And, and think about the two different ways a quarterback can play. Let's say you've got perfect mechanics, perfect ritual, perfect everything. You, you're crisp in your three-step, five-step drop. You move your shoulders the same way. It's very repetitive. It's very robotic. You know what that becomes? It becomes very predictable, yeah, too. Yeah, sure. Defensive back knows when the ball's coming out. Right. You watch the film. You see the pattern. 
you know when it's coming. With a guy like Aaron Rodgers or a guy like Patrick Mahomes who can move around anywhere, throw from any body position, any arm angle, you never know when it's coming out. So while some quarterbacks may need to wind up the slingshot just the perfect way to deliver an accurate pass, if you can do that without yes. letting the defense know, I'm cranking up the slingshot, right. here it comes, you're better off. You're better off to be able to do it the way that Rodgers and Mahomes can do it. That, 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 no doubt about it. Exactly right. I mean, you're, you know, think about it this way. All right, yeah. Hey, there's a guy going 10 yards. Across. You're looking to your right. There's a curl route to your right. Oh, it's not open. Now, there's a guy going across the middle 10 yards down the field. He's wide open. Okay, wait, let me get my feet over there and hop and tell the whole world I'm throwing to him. Great completion. We got a 10-yard completion. The guy got tackled. But the difference is Rodgers and Mahomes go, wait, he's open. Screw my feet. He's wide open. Let me get it to him right now. And they just flick it over there, turn their upper body and do that. And now the guy catches it and doesn't get tackled because the ball got to him a little quicker. And all of a sudden now that 10-yard gain for every other quarterback became a 25 or 30-yard gain for quarterbacks like Mahomes and Rodgers. And see, that's where stats can't really quantify their greatness and what they do on the field that way because – their ability to do that and be so consistent to your point, Mike, it, it, it's hard to show it on a stat sheet. But that split second they got the ball to their guy is a big difference in the game a bunch of times during the game that you just don't notice unless somebody points it out to you. And that stuff's uncoachable. See, I think that's the problem. You don't need a coach when you can do that. Excuse me. You, don't, you, know, you, you need to harness that power, bless you if you yeah. sneezed, or bless you if you didn't. <laughs> but uh, you, 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 don't, you don't need coaching when it's just magical and effortless and they have that ability like Rogers, like Mahomes, to just glance, flick it, deliver it, guys gone, instead of changing the base. And you know, what the thing you showed me a few years ago about how you want right. to focus the the shoulder and aim in that direction. Yeah. yeah, that all helps deliver an accurate football if you otherwise can't flick your wrist and deliver an accurate football. If you're one of the few on the planet that can flick your wrist or throw it this way or be looking over there and throw it over here or throw it behind your back or do whatever and deliver it accurately, you're in position to become one of the all-time greats. Yeah. That's why it's rare, but that's why it should be celebrated, not criticized, and I agree with you. Terry Bradshaw is coming off as a guy who's looking for anything he can to pile on Rodgers because he's upset with the way Rodgers is handling his business, Chris. Yeah, I mean, it seems that way. And listen, I mean, I don't love the way Rodgers is handling his business either. I'm, I'm with you, but I'm not going to go down like, you know, uh, a, a road of like falsehoods or just like bull crap to crap on him here. I mean, yes, he was done wrong. Uh, do I think he's being passive aggressive and doing some things here as well? No doubt about it. So it's, it's he's not handling it the greatest in, in my opinion either. But let's not start talking about footwork and things like that to now pile on about how a guy's handling his business off the field that that to me is not correct and not right and especially not when you're talking about really the guy that everybody imitates in football how to throw the football I mean that that's where you you lose me when you start to do that like Brady literally has made comments like he copies Rodgers we've heard Josh Allen talk about it he is the guy everybody watches for mechanics so when you say things like that, I just go, uh, geez, okay, blah, 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 C-A-T, cat, cat, cat. All right, here's some more blah, blah, blah from Terry Bradshaw on the way that Aaron Rodgers is handling the business of his contract with the Packers. If you want to be like Tom Brady, play out your contract and then move on. But in this case, you can't force Aaron Rodgers coddled maybe too much. He has no right to want to get the GM fired. What right does he have? No more right than I have to call Eric Shanks and say, tear my contract up. I had a really good year. And I'm, and you go, well, you've got four years left on it. Yeah, but I had a really good year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th this is where people need to understand the difference between a contract that Terry Bradshaw or anyone else would have directly with the employer when that's it. That spells out the full extent of the relationship. That's right. It doesn't. And what happens in the NFL where right. you've got two contracts. You've got two. And I say this all the time. Someone says, well, he signed a contract. He did. But the union signed a contract with the league, and the league signed a contract with the union, and players have separate rights under the broader labor contract. Now, for example, a rookie 
who's operating under a contract that was signed after he was drafted. First three years of his career, there isn't a damn thing he can do by holding out because the team, by rule, can't give him a new contract, can't give him what he wants. Rodgers, given where he is in his career, he can choose to withhold services, to exert leverage. He's got a price to pay, $50,000 a day in fines that can no longer be waived thanks to the most recent CBA, bonus forfeiture, lost salary. There are things that could happen to him financially if he exercises those rights, but he has the right to not show up. He has the right to hold out. The mere fact that the CBA says it's a $50,000 per day fine if you hold out means you can hold out Yeah, as long as you're willing to pay the fine. That's right. So that's where that's where it it, it becomes a problem. But here's the other problem, Chris, embedded within that, because there still is a contract to be dealt with. Rodgers has always been the guy who signs the ultra long term deal and yeah. takes the money. Right. Tom Brady had an easier path out of New England because his contract did expire. Yeah. He was able to go sign with another team in free agency because his contract went away and the Patriots didn't apply the franchise tag. They basically said, hey, if you want to go. Godspeed and thanks for the contributions and, uh, you know, we'll see you down the road at some point. And and uh, that that's the difference because Rodgers doesn't have that luxury of being able to say, I'm out, I'm going to go sign with the 49ers, the Broncos, the Raiders, whoever. No, and the Patriots went all in on winning Super Bowls for like 19 years in a row. Tom Brady has nothing to feel like cheated about other than Bill Belichick didn't tell him he loved him enough, which I understand. I mean, or, you know, didn't respect him enough. But he, he's not going to feel cheated that, you know, the organization didn't do everything they needed to do to win games. Rodgers is going to feel cheated because of that, and everybody in football feels that way. So, you know, Green Bay can spin it any way you want. They all, most of the NFL looks at it like, yeah, they've never gone all in on Rodgers. So there's that aspect. Of course, again, the draft pick last year with Jordan Love and all of that. And then to add on top of it, what you said, Mike, is even more like spit in his face to a degree. He's been overly nice to the organization with extremely team-friendly deals, his last two contracts. Extremely. He could have held their feet, their butts, and their heads over the fire and been like, I want way more, and I want to re-up and re-up and re-up. And he was nice and let the first contract kind of play out. And this one to add the years. And I'm sure that's where he feels scorned on top of this. It's a double whammy where he's going, wait, I, I literally did a deal for you guys to like feel good. We can go all in on the future and win the Super Bowl. And you haven't done that. And you drafted my replacement and screwed me over. And I think that probably adds a little, you know, piss to his vinegar too there. Um, that's not a real phrase, is it? Well, it's close enough. Good. But, you, you know, you, you're making a great point because – he could have decided, hey, you know what? If you guys are eventually going to play this year-to-year -year game with me, which they're doing, which he's trying to blow up, frankly, I'll play the year-to-year -year game with you, like Kirk Cousins did in Washington, like Dak Prescott did in Dallas. You really want to be over a barrel? I'll yeah. put you over a barrel. Right. I'll keep Could've. showing up every year. I'll bust my ass every year. If we're going to play this I-don't-have-security game, we're going to play it on my terms. He didn't do that. He gave them – security he got security he gave them security and now he thinks they're using it against him mm -hmm. and who knows what was said or what anyone was led to believe back when Aaron Rodgers signed his latest contract but this is a guy who has never wavered he's never waffled he's never given the Packers any reason to think he may retire prematurely or he wants to go play for another team right. to prove that he can get it done elsewhere he's always been all about the Packers he's always been I want to stay here for the rest of my career. I want to retire here. I want to play into my 40s. He's been the anti-Brett Favre, and I think that's one of the reasons why he's upset now. Yeah. Because they're treating him like a guy right. who's been wishy-washy. Yeah. They're treating him like a guy who's been greedy, who they can't wait to replace him with someone else that they draft in round one. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.